پادکست Dear guests, welcome back to our studio in the AI Summit in the Bosnian National Theater in Sarajevo. Uh, currently with myself is professor of embedded AI systems in the university in Finland, Eastern Finland, so I apologize. Uh, Mr. Leo Karkainen, hopefully I pronounced it good. It was fine, uh, yes, I will survive with that. <laughs> uh, thanks a lot, professor. Thank you for attending the summit and attending our podcast. My first question uh, is, Explain to us what's happening in the world. You are the most relevant guy to tell us what's happening with all of the AI stuff. So there is actually, there has been a change in a couple of years in, 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 in the fact that previously people did not know that they're actually using AI. Mm-hmm. And now it has become evident with a large language models. Mm-hmm. So people really know that this is now an AI result that they are following up. Uh, What I mean when I say that is that, that, that lots of the people have been using Google, for example, that, mm-hmm. that's also based on AI, the search engine. They have even trained it by, by giving example about what are the search sentences. Yeah. So, so you could actually say that everybody else is, is an AI trainer mm-hmm. by providing the data and everybody has, has been using it for a long time already. Mm-hmm. But down there is a, there is a cognitive, mm-hmm. uh, let's say conscious usage of, of the yeah. AI that has come mm-hmm. out. And to a certain extent, if one would think about this, how it has evolved, uh, I like the way that, that it actually brings the natural user interface mm-hmm. to humans for machines. Mm-hmm. Because kind of later, what we kind of, or earlier, if we kind of would think about the situation, uh, the world has digitized a lot mm-hmm. in a long time, in long term. And now that it has become more and more difficult for people to handle in a way that they are systems that are hard to use. They require knowledge, what you have to train yourself in a long time. And it has increased the digital divide. Mm-hmm. So there's lots of elderly people who are out of the game and something like that. What AI is now bringing is an interface that is kind of a writing with your brother or <laughs> writing to your mother. And then you can ask questions and it is actually telling you questions. And, mm. and it is very familiar in a way that there's also hallucinations coming up <laughs> in, 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 in places. So there has been already a change mm. with that. With that in the, in, in. And I would say that it will actually change the way that we use computers. Mm-hmm. So it is not going to be a huge skill because we can just ask them. Yeah. So, uh, for example, you have a device at your home that you have an Ethernet kind of, let's say, cable yeah. system that you want to put in on the system. And then you just kind of ask about how should I do this? Yeah. And then they say, okay, take the red cable and put that in that yeah. box around yeah. in the corner. Explain to me as I'm a five year old. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Even, even. Yeah. And of course, I, I think that this is good in the sense on, on yeah. and perhaps being able to explain in a way that that whole range yeah. of kind of people can, uh, can get it. Yeah. And that we, it is the way of actually yeah. closing the digital divide. Yeah. Uh, and this is what I think is the biggest yeah. one, of the th- one of the biggest things that yeah. is kind of has, is currently happening. Yeah. It's not yet there, yeah. there yet, mm-hmm. you don't see it. You, di- yeah. you can see it from example here when we are sitting about looking at the presentations here. Mm-hmm. We are seeing, for example, how, we are, how, how for example, medical doctors can, can utilize the AI mm-hmm. by just kind of when they speak around, the AI mm-hmm. can take their speech up and they can also make a summary out of it yeah. in, in, in terms so that, that you can yeah. actually use the system in a very natural way and you don't have yeah. to kind of figure out which was the menu selection I have to do yeah. in order to do something well, like one that. One of the, the things one of my guests told me yesterday is uh, basically that uh, still, for example, in Germany, a percent of, percentage of the people using it on a daily basis It's up to around 12%, uh, which is in fact a higher number than average in, in comparison to some other countries uh, and here. And uh, you would say that it's a small percentage of the people that are using it on a daily basis. So what can we do to, let's say, educate people more and bring them closer towards the AI tools? Perhaps there is also a question of reliability. Mm-hmm. in a sense that we have to improve the type of things that, that it would actually give you proper answers yeah. in a way. And then it has to be kind of attached to, to not only the training data that mm-hmm. has used because it grows old, also the kind of capability of finding out new data that has come out. Mm-hmm. So it is more about kind of news 
uh, mm-hmm. kind of a, let's say uh, a systems like Reuters in a way that yeah. can bring you information that is novel. Yeah. And to a certain extent, that doesn't happen with a, with a, the train mm-hmm. system very easily because the training of those things is really, really expensive. Yeah. So it's hundreds of millions if you do something mm-hmm. like that. In the, in yeah. the, in a, and you don't want to train it yeah. again and again. Okay, tomorrow something happens and I want yeah. that you would be able to do that. Yeah. So we had to train them in a way that they actually can access information from somewhere. Mm-hmm. And that also comes the skill about how to access the relevant information that is not fake news. Yeah. This is the, so which yeah. is not and, and the, you have this kind of a challenges to, to answer in a way so what what is the editor doing on the system and, and if it's so large as this language models are it contains so much information there's a huge shop if you would be, be a human editor looking at that yeah. and still uh, some of them are actually done in a way that, that humans are, are are curating the data that is coming in yeah. exactly for these purposes well the majority of the people that I'm speaking with they are afraid of the bias. In fact, the, the exact uh, thing that you, you mentioned. So uh, we are not sure whether the AI system in place could go and be biased, maybe give us the wrong uh, answer or give us double the truth. So that I'm comparing is, that it. Was a, yeah. That was a really good question in a sense, because I have yeah. another angle in the, which you, yeah. you find out on the... On the uh, so, for example, if you are... This is a very standard example. So if you are using kind of AI for, for CVs, mm-hmm for people and you train your AI to select people according to the CV mm-hmm. that is coming out. Then indeed what happens with an AI that it will be biased, for example, with gender and perhaps with age yeah. in systems when you ask about things. So then in some occasions people are thinking, okay, I have made an AI system and I will start deploying it and using mm-hmm. it for, for hiring people. But uh, they actually have a little understanding misunderstood what is the reason why would you train a, a model to do yeah. that it is actually for detecting bias in human decisions mm-hmm. because yeah. they actually just copy what we do yeah in a sense and then you can actually say that okay our perhaps you can say so that okay i have now trained my cvs with an ai and then i can <coughs> come out and say that that okay it seems that my bias is more than anybody else <laughs> and then come to work in my company yeah. and i have proved it Essentially, with mm-hmm. a with a <laughs> with a system that comes out from the yeah. uh, uh, from the and this is the right to use it mm-hmm. and then when you continue using it up to the point that there is no bias anymore because you improve your own behavior yeah. coming out of that yeah. and then when you are right in the system you ha- have got yeah. it wrong uh, not wrong but actually yeah. right then you can actually use that also the code to hire yeah. people yeah in fact but it yeah. requires this 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 steps of doing things mm-hmm. so first you actually yeah. make sure that your data set is clean. Mm-hmm. And first you do it in such a way that you actually ask people mm-hmm. to do the right right thing. And as long as your AI is giving you a result that, that there is a bias in mm-hmm. the data because you can easily find it out, yeah. then you use it that. Basically, so yes, yeah. there is a bias, but it's an asset. It's not a problem. Yeah. It's in fact, let's call it a control tower for your behavior. The kind of a thing, it's a, it's, it's a way to suggest how you would be better. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, exactly. you don't have to follow the case, but of course, I would say that if you have yeah. some corporate social responsibility, CSR actions in a way, it's good to have in a report that we have proven with these systems that, mm-hmm. that, that our way of handling with our employment mm-hmm. system yeah. is actually kind of a, it's fair. Mm-hmm. It's fair for age. It's fair for, for gender. Yeah. And that is actually thing that I would say that you attest, you get the best people to work for mm-hmm. you. Yes, truly. So, Truly, you're, so you're this was a different rich, answer yeah. that you expected, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> it was. It, it surprised me. <laughs> uh, how does the uh, teaching AI uh, looks like? Uh, how do you? How do you? Uh, how, how it's in the process, and uh, do you enjoy? How how do the younger generation, for example, uh, com- compare to a bit older? Uh, are there more, let's say? Uh, ready for the AI world? Uh, are we are we more creative or less creative with the AI? So if you're using AI for teaching, sometimes it is good for repetitive tasks that people can kind of train themselves in peace. Mm. In those cases, multiplication tables, you could ask them and then it yeah. goes back to the numbers that you said, said wrongly thing and, mm. and then it kind of teaches that out. In the, in the, yeah. So that kind of a system is actually helping. 
uh, and there may be something else that I, you, you can actually make it so that it that then then teaching becomes a little more accessible mm -hmm. in that type of a way when you automate it. Uh, there may be cases when it starts producing something when you have a generative model. Mm -hmm. Then the question is sometimes is that 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 to what extent you have to be able to do things um, by yourself. Mm -hmm. And in order to have the skills, it's not enough to actually be asking a computer to do it. Mm. So we have some challenges in, in, in the versions mm. when you have language that is actually producing uh, uh, kind mm. of answers to you. For certain things that where you're actually studying, if you make an essay, for example, and you are studying, for example, what is the role of, of let's say, uh, nuclear power in, 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 in climate change, mm -hmm. for example. And then if you have a good search engine, Mm. That system is a good search engine and you can find out data mm. and relevant. And, mm. and if you combine them in a novel way, uh, then you actually make a good work. Mm -hmm. Because of course you should be able to use references yeah. that is coming on the places. And that's what science works. Yes. Nobody remembers everything that happens. Yes, yes, but they yes. have a capability of, of knowing where to ask. Yeah. And this we should turn to people as well in the say, and also they are AI means to figure out whether you have copied your system mm -hmm. or whether it has to kind of a, it, it is an original combination what uh -huh. you are providing yeah. in, a, in, in, in systems. Mm -hmm. right? And what I think that when people are doing things very often, it's really important to learn two things, how things are. And then the other part, which is, and this is very, happen, very often happening in the lectures, you, you told them the right way to, to walk down mm -hmm. in the streets. And then you make exercises where people can try. Mm -hmm. And then what they are learning to make, they are learning actually to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. And if you don't learn to make mistakes, you don't know what doesn't work when you start really doing something. Mm -hmm. and, and this is the hard mm -hmm. part. And then if those exercises are too easy and you don't make your own exercises and you find out very mm -hmm. too soon that this is, this is a, there's a problem on here, then you don't, don't learn the, mm -hmm. the space of things that should not be used. Mm -hmm on that problem. Mm. And then if you know that, you have much less to actually select when you are mm -hmm. randomly searching the way to solve some problems. Yeah. You get an intuition that yeah. makes you enable to, be, to find creative solutions. I remember was when I was starting uh, my current role uh, in my corporation, and I had an amazing mentor, the guy who went through all of the management trainings and was, was a really inspiring, really inspiring leader uh, he gave me one advice and he told me it doesn't matter how much you do or do not know about the solution we are selling. It's not important at all. Uh, the sales processes, you'll make your own. Don't worry about it. But the main skill that you need to have and train it is to know where to look and where to ask. If you know where to ask, ask and, and what to ask, <laughs> uh, you're all set and you're going to be successful. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So there is this kind of capability of us to be yeah. kind of a more intelligent than when oneself, because actually you can rely to the information that is happening and produced yeah. for the whole humankind. Yeah. I would say that we are a much bigger entity mm. together than we would yeah. be alone. Yeah. So that's that's really true. Yeah. Uh, you have, uh, let's say, uh, really a big experience and a good look on the industry itself. Uh, and of course the knowledge, the references, and in, because of that I want to ask you one uh, important question. Uh, there is a lot of discussion of whether AI is going to kill uh, jobs that we know that are exist today, uh, which I don't agree uh, with. I believe that it's going to change the world and something that we were doing for the bad, for the previous 30 years it's going to be there but in a kind of different different form uh, but uh, what do you think how much is it going to change job market and uh, overall industries i think it will change job markets uh, it may made uh, it brings capabilities mm -hmm. so some things that are now kind of a professions become cap capabilities for everybody mm -hmm. So then doing something further becomes easier. Mm -hmm. So it's not so anymore that you have to know HTML in order to write the, to write yeah. the web page for yourself. In a way, you could say that Meta has it already for you or a certain yeah. extent in the way so that it, it, it is easy to set up a company, for example. Mm -hmm. And then you get accounting quite easily with, with your skills in the settings. So it, it, it reduces the, the, the kind of a barrier of entry. Mm -hmm. 
and then it actually makes it in such a way that somebody has a good idea. It's more possible. It's much easier to bring it in the market. Mm-hmm. You can get the sales channels that are all over the world very yeah. easy if you can use internet in in, in mm-hmm. accessing those places. So yeah. lots of capabilities have come that has opened possibilities mm-hmm. for people. And that is the part where I think that, that, and all of this is actually behaving because you have an AI solution under mm-hmm. it that can handle the, the yeah. huge load that, that these systems can yeah. kind of provide. And this I would mean that, that it gives opportunities to people. Mm-hmm. But they are not necessarily anymore the kind of standard opportunities what they used to them have to be mm-hmm. in a way. But it's more about kind of what can I provide to the world that I can set it up yeah. and, and I put it for. I have this good idea. Mm-hmm. And that good idea is not anymore so that you have to, to kind of, let's say, bang your head 10 years in a wall in order to actually set yeah. up some some mm-hmm. proof of concepts. Yeah. So, so that speed is going to increase in, the, in, mm-hmm. in that ty- type of a level. But of course, there are some professions that are not really professional in that way. Some of them are diverging in a way that, that for example, you could say that in, 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 in some, for example, for X-ray detection, uh, X-ray using X-ray for, 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 uh, mm-hmm. for cancer detection, for example, the machines are, are starting to be as good as humans are there. Mm-hmm. And, but this is not, so you could even think that you don't have radiologists after that. Mm-hmm. But this is not a true statement either, because the machine is only doing what used to be. Mm-hmm. So it's only doing the things that, that we already know mm-hmm. by, by, by the humans. And it doesn't develop further, because if mm-hmm. we are trained, it, it's, it stays there. Mm-hmm. And then I would say that in the world, there's a, there's a huge, let's say, gap in radiologists, in a mm-hmm. way. And I could think that we could actually then employ all of them mm-hmm. just easily. But what is the problem is that they are still a huge amount of people who are not le- who are not served, mm-hmm. and we can actually make that balance in such a way that they are still this. We are building still experts on the area because we need that for the development of the world, doing the research and mm-hmm. finding new kind of a solution for them. And then at the side, the one that we have already learned is the type of a thing we can automate mm-hmm. and do that. So this is the way I, I, yeah. I can, can make it. So so certain prof- I, the radiologist is one that I say that okay would disappear. I don't think at yeah. all. So mm-hmm. because you need that part of yeah. this is making it, keeping it alive. You have to keep it up, up the yeah. skills. Yeah. The machine itself does not, there is no way of actually without human input um, to actually make it better. Yeah, it's up to us. It's up to us how we are going to create the future world. It is up to us. So, it is like when we, you know, yeah. so that, that is, and, and they yeah. always on the on these systems, they should be so that they would be a few human, they say, supervisor somehow there, which yeah. is kind of looking at the whole system. <laughs> but I don't think that it would actually be kind of involved so much on the individual decision that you mm-hmm. do. So because how do you, do, you don't automate anything. Yeah. For example, in X-rays, if you already always require that the humans would look at the X-ray estimations, mm-hmm. you ex- the human would spend exactly the same time or even yeah. longer time to figure out what, it, what, yeah. what this image than, than, than mm-hmm. it would just be doing it on its own work. Mm-hmm. So that doesn't help us at all. Mm-hmm. It does not help mm-hmm. humanity either. So. Yeah. Understood. And Professor, uh, as a last question, it will not be a question, but rather uh, I would like to ask you to uh, advise to our younger people, those who are still not in the AI, and not just younger, younger, but, but overall uh, those who are listening to the podcasts, uh, who's gonna, those who are going to be looking at this, what's your advice for the people that are still not using AI, uh, what's your advice for them on what should they be doing uh, to prepare for the time that's coming? They don't notice that they use it already all, all the mm-hmm. time. So if they are listening Spotify, then using AI or TikTok. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> so all of these things that they are mm-hmm. doing are using AI. Yeah. So now the question perhaps is that what would else you would yeah. do so that don't remember remember that you actually do exercise you actually kind of have motoric motor skills as well mm-hmm. and fine motorics as well you are not actually spending time with with buttons on your screen that doesn't give you the capability of using your hands in a very effective ways or eyes do sports could be at good health yeah. in a way and and also make sure that when you read something and find it out and understand it yourself. Because if you have the asset of being able to have intuition on stuff and understanding mm-hmm. it, it's, 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 uh, it's much kind of more rewarding than, than mm-hmm. just getting the next cat video and mm-hmm. laughing at how the cats <laughs> yeah. are crazy. So yeah. this becomes boring at some stage of yes. your life. The earlier it happens, the better. The better for you. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, professor, thanks a lot and we really appreciate you attending our summit and our episode. Oh, thank you, my pleasure.